time and the questions to find out is that my mom's vision in a dim room is, is non-existent. So my mom felt as though she had been wheeled into a closet. Um, she didn't have the call light. She couldn't find, she didn't know where she was. She couldn't find the, uh, the light switch. And my dad followed a few minutes later to hear her wailing, and she believed she was put in a closet. So uh, that caused a lot of, um, you know, heartache on my mom and dad's part. But it also took more time of the staffs to get her settled down and to explain. The time would have been saved had that caregiver given a second to say, okay, what else do you need, you know, and made sure the attention to detail, the call light, and those things. Mm -hmm. I think that's important any time you leave a resident or a patient that you check with them to make sure that all their needs are met before you exit mm -hmm. and go on to the next one. How about you, mm -hmm. Kay? Um, it brings to mind one time when Pat was in the hospital um, after he had had one of his strokes. They perceived at night they were afraid that he might get out of bed on his own, and so they strapped him in. He became, I want to use the word claustrophobic, he was just frantic. Ashley could reach and called me on the phone because he couldn't get anybody to come in by him. Hmm. Now, I know they were doing it because they felt it was for his safety, but he needed a little more assurance and because it was so traumatic for him. It was very hard on him. I mean, he couldn't sleep at night or anything, and he was just kind of left alone there all night, which I was to the point, you know, I would have liked to, I'd just go in and sit with him to reassure him or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I know when he had his, he also had surgery when he had his broken hip, and the care before surgery was, um, they were very aware of the pain because he hadn't had surgery yet and he had to lay there for a while. and. Once he went in and had the surgery and came out, from that point on, it seemed like it was just kind of a, a regular type of care. And he was, whenever they would handle him, he would be wincing and crying in pain. And we were constantly reminding them, you know, don't be quite so rough because he's really in a lot of pain. So I think if they listen a little more to the patient, right. yeah, when you're in a hospital mm -hmm. a long time and you, you're constantly complaining about things, it becomes commonplace to hear it. But on their end... You know, they're they're giving you, uh, they're telling you what what they're feeling, and you need to take that really into consideration. I think the importance of listening is so key, isn't it? Well, I, the one thing I just wanted to add about that, though, the roughness, even in terms of dressing someone. You know, my grandmother and mom both will identify who's careful with them uh, when they're when they're dressed, and and who just is is very rough and and puts too much tension on their short sore joints. So that's mm -hmm. a, a big thing in their mind too, is someone who will be gentle. Right. Mm -hmm. What experiences have been helpful to you? When have caregivers performed uh, satisfactorily and, and you really felt good about the care that was being given? Well, I think that we've had some excellent caregivers who've had a sense of humor and uh, who just, you know, are, you know, realize that my husband, even though he has a disability and has limitations, he's still an intelligent person and still has the... Um, still has a personality even though it isn't isn't the way it used to be he's not as spontaneous as he used to be but he appreciates that and uh, and so do I and you know treating him with respect and and not talking down to him and finding that person taking the time to find that person inside with that disability that's been just wonderful to have caregivers who seem to be really um, loving their job and caring about the person and that, that really shows through and it makes our life just wonderful when we have people like that working with uh, with my husband I know that when Pat was in, my husband was in the hospital for three months in rehab after his stroke that left him paralyzed on the left side. And a lot of the nurses actually became friends. Mm -hmm. And he has a lot of humor to him. He's, he's a very funny guy. He tells a lot of jokes and things like that. And they got to the point where when they were bringing tough cases into the hospital, people who were very despondent over their condition, especially those who have had strokes or whatever that was going to keep them there a while. They would check with him to see if he would mind if they could put those people in his room because he, he could joke and kind of bring them out and, you know, let them see a lighter side. And that was really nice. It made him feel good about there were so many things he couldn't do. It gave him a good feeling about mm -hmm. what he could do and what he could help out there. So that, 
That was really nice when they did that for him. Sure. He really he enjoyed in, that. He was important. Right. He was and valuable. He was useful, and not just absolutely. laying there. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I think very often uh, what is so beneficial is to keep in mind that the room or wherever the client happens to be sh should be set up in such a way that it is of, of benefit and convenient for the resident. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and not automatically moving the garbage can where you like it, if, and it's easier for the nursing assistant to, to empty, but where is it best for the resident? And, and not to assume things like um, the curtain should go up in the morning or, and, or lights should be on or off, but to ask so that environment can be made comfortable. Mm -hmm. What uh, advice can you give to the new caregivers that are watching this tape? Um, to help reduce your and your loved one's stress when they're interacting with you? I think one of the things is really um, to look for the positives and um, to give encouragement to the client and to the patient um, because um, they need that. And um, um, I think also asking them what, what, what would be helpful, what they would like, what would make their day or whatever they're doing easier or more, more you know, um, comfortable for them. And also I just think the people skills, I think, you know, listening and communication, I think, and uh, those kind of things are just, it's a crossover, I think, that, that, that's very important as a caregiver to have those people skills. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not just a job. Sure. It's a no, person. I think um, a focus that would look at accepting the resident where they are and with what's happening in their life, not with how it should be. Okay. I've mm -hmm. had a few discussions where, you know, a, a, a caregiver had said to my mom, well, you shouldn't have to go to the bathroom this often after a laxative. Uh, and the reality is you have to take things how they are and how this person presents them to you and, and not how it should be for your convenience. I think sometimes, and to, it's depressing to be locked, enclosed all day in a certain place where you really don't want to be. So if they can bring mm -hmm. some levity to the, mm -hmm. to the everyday living, you know, a little bit of fun, a little bit of joking, I think that the patient really appreciates that. It mm -hmm. Just lightens up mm -hmm. the everyday common. <laughs> That just brings to mind, uh, within the last week, I visited my grandmother, and as I walked in, she had a washcloth across her nose and her mouth, and she had a banana in her hand, and I was like, okay, Grams, you know, what are, what are you doing here? And um, as, I, as I opened the door, there is a, another health care worker also with the same disguise on, and they were playing a game of, of uh, cops and robbers and, and bandits and cowboys shooting each other with the banana, and my grandma was having a great time. And so that was just so wonderful to see that someone would care about mm -hmm. uh, some, bringing some light and some joy into her life. I think the other thing is, is important for a caregiver to realize is to be flexible, that each day is different. The, the schedule is never going to be exactly the same because people are different and things change all the time and so that you can't expect to have the routine go so smoothly. You have to go with the flow and kind of just take each day as it comes. Yeah. Well, we're almost out of time, but any closing thoughts by anyone? Well, you know, I think one of the things that has occurred to me is that if caregivers react and interact with their residents in a manner that they would they would like to be treated or they would like their parents to be treated that would frame things in a way that would bring more care and more compassion uh, we're also to the point you know that at any one of us or anyone listening could be in a situation where at a given time they're the one in the bed requiring the care because of either a stroke at a young age or an accident. And so it's, we're all just a moment away from needing to depend on someone else for some very basic fundamental human needs. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much ladies for sharing a bit of your lives with us.